Hello and welcome to this instructional activity video being brought to you by the Georgia Department of Education. My name is Tania N. Davis and I am your virtual specialist in the area of social studies for second grade teachers of Georgia. Welcome, welcome. I wanted to share this tiny video with you. I have titled it, So What Do You Think? So let's dive in and learn more about what that means and how it applies to our students. So this activity or this skill that I'm going to be sharing with you is a way that students can represent what they have learned in a non-threatening way. Again, going back to our culturally responsive teaching and thinking about how education should be fair and equitable and accessible. This is one way that you can do it. You're going to enjoy do, doing this and your kids are going to like it too. So for example, we have been studying a topic and as you're preparing to use this particular strategy, I want you to begin with the end in mind. So what would your essential question be that you would have students to answer? So for example, talking about historical figures and thinking about their character traits, their lives, how were they lived, affected, and impacted their lives, their life choices. So I thought about, for example, to share with an example to share with you would be Dr. King and how he came to have his own day and a national holiday just for him in his honor. So your essential question might be something to the effect of why do you think, giving them ownership, why do you think that Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Um, has or was able to receive or given a day to be celebrated and remembered? That might be your essential question. And then step two, you're going to provide a lot of exposure and background knowledge on this topic to your students throughout the, throughout the course of your instruction. So you may have been doing activities where they were able to see that Dr. King has statues devoted to him. There is a museum, there's his church, there's the King Center, talking about speeches or marching or being arrested or sacrificing for others. So you're exposing students to different types of information in different formats, including visual literacy opportunities where they can begin to build their argument one way or the other. Then you're going to grab your favorite sticky notes, get a variety of color of post-it notes or sticky notes of your choice, and some colorful pom-poms, and you're going to actually um, color code and match them if you can. So if you have yellow sticky notes, place a yellow pom-pom on top. I just use regular liquid glue. If you want to use hot glue, you could do that as well. I, for the activity that I did with my students, I chose three different colors, and I had three different pom-poms, and each of the colors represented an option. So say, for example, talking about Dr. King, you might have your students place a blue pom-pom under the image or under the book, whatever you're using, whatever resources you're using, that demonstrated Dr. King's compassion for others. You might use a hot pink sticky note and pom-pom to represent how he demonstrated leadership. A yellow pom-pom might be which image or book or symbol best represented the civil rights movement or his involvement in it. And again, it's, it's personal ownership. So students can place their sticky note and post it wherever they would like to. However, they do have to be ready to prove their choice. Okay, so they've learned a lot about this topic. They've evaluated the information for themselves. Now they're using their sticky notes to show their post personal choice and taking ownership of what they've learned. They have to be able to prove it by providing a reason for their opinion. So tying that skill in as well. You could be doing an activity related to artifacts or something of that nature. Is this a primary source? If it's a primary source, put a blue sticky and post it there. If it's a secondary source, put a yellow sticky note and post it there. Um, something of that nature, just to give you some examples. And then you're going to allow students at the very end of the activity to go around and to view what their classmates, what their peers have selected. This gives them a chance to see what other people are thinking, how many people thought the same way that they did, how many people did not think the same way that they did, are they surprised by their findings? And then if you have additional time, you can also, of course, allow students to talk with their peers and, and find out specifically why someone selected to do something or not. Also, too, I want to make sure that I mention that this goes back or ties into our inquiry skills and T 
teaching with um, inquiry in mind and allowing students to have exposure to questioning, thinking for themselves, challenging what they've learned in a respectful way, like in a debatable, non-threatening manner where they're questioning or doing a little bit of pushback or wondering or diving deeper into a topic. So this ties into inquiry quite beautifully as well. We'll help to support those lessons. I hope that this um, activity was something that you think that you can implement in your classroom. It is very fun and easy to implement. You just need stickies and pom-poms. You need your essential question. You already have your phenomenal teaching and then give your students opportunity to think and express themselves with a little bit more autonomy. Be well, take care, and thank you for joining me. Again, this was being brought to you by the Georgia Department of Education. My name is Tania N. Davis. Take care.